Hi, I am Robin Graham, a business strategist and coach, and I am here today to help you create your personal brand and differentiate yourself so that you stand out online. We're also going to dive into your soulmate client. So this is the Spring Into Clarity, Refresh Your Personal Brand Hands-On Workshop. And I am thrilled that you are here with me today. I would like to start by sharing a Bible verse, but before I do that, I'm going to share my screen. I also just put into the chat the link to schedule a call with me should you have questions after the fact. But for now, let me share my screen. And... I want to pull up the workbook. And the reason I want to pull up the workbook is because it's hands-on. So if you don't have this workbook, then um, it's okay because what we're going to do is go through the workbook and then you will have opportunities to stop, pause the presentation and answer any questions that I pose to you, which there will be a lot of them. This is going to be deep dive thinking so that you get the best results possible out of attending or watching the replay of this workshop. So a little bit about me, as I said, I'm a, a business growth strategist and coach. I work with service-based, purpose-driven, impact-driven women who are Christian and a lot of which are in the health and wellness industries. However, I also work with many people who are in service-based industries like Oh, any number of things, but health coaches, life coaches, um, virtual assistants, online business managers, um, estheticians, the list goes on and on. So if that fits you, then welcome. And I would love to get to know you even better. See if we could potentially work together down the road. So our goals today are, as I said, to really fine tune and give you complete clarity and confidence around your personal brand and who your soulmate clients are, and then craft a message that resonates with those soulmate clients so that you can connect with them and then they convert to paying clients. Commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. I love this verse because when we are trying to build a business, oftentimes we get in our own head, we create our own ideas and think that we're going to do it all by ourselves. And the reality is we're not meant to do it by ourselves. And it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster when we depend on the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit and allow him to guide us and to direct our efforts so when we commit our business to the Lord, and this is for anyone, if you're a Christian business owner and you want to have your faith in your business, but don't necessarily want your faith to be forward facing, meaning you don't want to scream it from the mountaintops and say that you only work with Christian business owners, that is completely fine. But your business is going to go farther faster if you do have faith at the cornerstone of your business. So feel confident in the fact that you can have your faith in your business. You can ask Christ to be with you every step of the way. And you can build your business on the foundation of your value of faith without having to have it be forward facing. If you're like me and you want it forward facing, that is fine too, because it's your business. And the reason I have my faith forward facing in my business is because I have found over the years that I want to coach people and work with people who are wanting to bring glory to God, who want to grow God's kingdom and who want to stay aligned with their faith and talk about their faith and bring their faith into the foundation of their business. So that is why faith is forward facing in my business, but that doesn't mean it has to be for yours. So I do include scripture in this workshop, um, just a few verses, and that is part of my business. And that is why, but that's also part of my personal brand. So you can have your faith as part of your personal brand as well, because when we talk about differentiating yourself, it can be a differentiating factor. So before we 
begin, I would love for you to establish a goal for the program, for the workshop. What do you want to get out of this workshop? And this will help you go deeper. If you have something you want to get out of this, maybe it is that you want to refine your message. Maybe you want to transform your business. Maybe you just want to build a personal brand because you haven't done that before. Maybe it's that you want to create message, a message that is clear and concise and helps other people be confident in who you are. But what is your goal for attending this or watching the replay? What is the transformation that you desire? Is it fine tuning, giving your your personal brand a refresh? Is it really honing in on who your soulmate client is? Is it trans transforming your message so that it connects better? It could be any number of things. You could even put a dollar amount to this transformation that you desire. Maybe it's you want to get so many new clients from this experience. Maybe it's that you want to, um, it could be anything. Maybe it's what you want to go from 50K to 100K, whatever transformation in your business or personally that you want to achieve, put that there. And then I like to see, and I won't see this, but I would like to see you put in your annual income goal. Here's why. We're in May. So you've had almost five months, four and a half months in this year, where are you at from an income perspective and where is your goal? And after attending this, after refining your messaging based on having complete clarity and confidence in your personal brand and your soulmate clients, what does that do for that bottom line, for the end goal for the year? It's just interesting to see the transformation that happens. What is your soulmate client goal? This could be the number of clients that you achieve, the goals that you want to help them achieve, your God-led calling, your purpose. It's nice to have this written down and in front of you so that you remember why you're here, why you're doing what you're doing and why you're serving who you're serving. If you do not have clarity on what God is calling you to, what purpose he has for you, a couple of things you can do. First, dive into scripture. What is he saying to you? What is that message that you've kind of heard on replay that you haven't acted on because you weren't sure what to do? Where do you feel he's calling you? Who does he keep placing in front of you? What messages do you keep seeing or hearing in email or conversations that you know are leading to this thing that you just keep feeling and hearing over and over again. Make a list of your values, visions, and passions. Where they overlap, in a, like in a Venn diagram, where they overlap is where your purpose lies. Pray before you do that exercise. Read scripture before and after and help ask the Holy Spirit to help you see what it is that God is calling you to or what the purpose is he has for you if you don't already have a strong conviction on what that purpose is. Sometimes it can be that there's doubt because things haven't been going the way you wanted them to go. Your business hasn't been growing as fast as you wanted it to grow. You haven't attracted the clients you've wanted to attract. So maybe there's some doubt there. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you surrender anything that you're holding on to, like doubts or fears, and lay them at Jesus' feet so that he can then help you move forward and get rid of the distractions and the chaos in your mind that Satan is creating and distracting you with. What is your biggest struggle to date? And this biggest struggle could be related to um, attracting clients, feeling confident, having clarity, be any number of things. But what is your biggest struggle to date? It will be interesting to see after you do the workshop, if that biggest struggle to some extent isn't resolved. Before we dive into what your personal brand is and how you define it, I would like to just read this Bible verse. It's one that I hold dearly to, especially in moments where I'm experiencing doubt, fear, any of those negative thoughts as to whether or not I'm on the right path. 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. When things aren't going well, this is a great verse to reflect on because I know that God is with me. There's no question. He has only what's best for me in his plans. His plans are limitless. His plans are perfect. Mine and my to-do list, not so much. And so sometimes I get stuck and I think we all do uh, from time to time. So this is a great verse to reflect on to recognize that God is always with us and for us, never against us. It's the world and external factors that tend to go against us. So <laughs> this has day one agenda. What I'm doing for the replay is I am actually recording this all in one setting. So you'll see these agendas. It is great to fill them out and you could actually break the recording, the replay out into two different days if you chose to. Um, but this document is nice to have because you can write your purpose at the top, especially if you did that purpose exercise. This is a great reminder that this is my purpose. This is why I'm here. What is your superpower? This is just a reminder of some of the strengths that God has given you that you can use going forward to grow your business and serve others. And what is your goal for being here? Why are you watching this? In the first column, your win or accomplishment for the day, what is your big takeaway? What is an aha moment that you can implement in your business today? What did you learn about yourself and your personal brand? And what are the action items that you need to take away and then implement within your business? And of course, there's always a place for questions. If you have questions, you can schedule a call with me and that link to schedule a call with me will be in the description on YouTube so that you can just click that link and access my calendar. And I am happy to get on a call with you and answer any questions that you have. You can also email me at info at the robingram.com. All right, so let's dive into our focus for today. What is a personal brand? A personal brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. It's that perception that they have of you. What do they say about you when you're not in the room? What's that feeling they have when you walk up to them and say, hello, I'm so-and-so? What is the perception? Now, your personal branding is different than your personal brand. Your personal branding is how you differentiate yourself. It's how you tell the world about what makes you unique. It's how you talk about yourself. It's how you communicate your uniqueness and the way that you serve your people. You help people achieve results or the way you provide a solution for others who happen to have a pain point or a need that you can solve. Your personal branding is that emotional connection that you build, you create, you build, and you foster with your audience to let them know that you're here for them, that you get them, that you understand them, that you've been right where they are today. Now, your brand identity is not your brand. There's a lot of confusion out there, and you'll see it on social media, on websites, everywhere. Your brand identity is your logo, your color palette, your topography, those physical, tangible things that help you become recognizable. They are not your personal brand. Your personal brand is that perception other people have of you. But collectively, your personal brand, your personal branding, your messaging, your communication, and your brand identity come together to make you memorable, shareable, and recognizable. And these are all traits that we must have if we want to stand out online. So that is why we want to do this workshop so that we can really fine tune, refresh, or create our personal brand. 
So let's define your personal brand. What differentiates you from everyone else who does what you do? What makes you unique? What helps you stand out? Is it what you do? Is it how you do it? Is it your why? Is it who you serve? Is it your past experiences? There are so many factors that can go into differentiating yourself and your business. It could be that your offers and pricing are just outstandingly unique. It could be that you only serve a certain subset of the population or a certain location. Um, it could be any number of things. What characteristics, experiences, education, mistakes, et cetera, differentiate you from your peers, from others in your niche? So for example, I worked in corporate for many years and then I had a medical writing business because I have a doctorate in pharmacy. So when I was working in those environments, I worked with marketing a ton, did a ton of marketing. I also worked in customer service. And when I say customer service, I wasn't answering phones like your Zappos or Amazon representative. I was providing service for doctors, nurses, lawyers, sometimes patients. So I was providing customer service in the way I treated other people, interacted with other people. So this is where some of those characteristics like honesty, integrity, kindness, compassion, empathy come into play. Process mapping, strategic thinking, creating processes and algorithms for treatment plans or um, choosing medication therapy, all kinds of different things. So I'm a teacher and a trainer and I worked with team members and helped educate them. I worked with other departments within organizations. I worked with people outside the company and trained them. I was able to teach different aspects of pharmacy. I was able to teach aspects of managed care to pharmaceutical companies. I was able to educate doctors, pharmacists, nurses, even lawyers. So all of those things, those aspects of teaching became part of my personal brand because I'm a teacher at heart and I love to educate. I love to take everything I've learned over the years and give it to other people so that they don't have to do all the research or spend all the time doing the back end uh, learning of skills and things. I can teach them and help them implement it so it's done quickly and easily. Being a leader. Are you involved with organizations in your community, within your business or a, a former business that you worked with? Do you volunteer? All of these things make you unique. So of these, which ones do you relate to? And what beyond these four things can you write down as things that differentiate you from everybody else? And you may not see them as unique, but you don't know what everybody else has done. But these are things that have definitely added to your skill sets, your experience, and that have led you to write to where you are today to be the leader in your industry, to be the go-to in your industry, to be able to help people that need your service product or offering more than they need it from anyone else because you're gonna provide it the way that they need the solution provided. What don't you like about your industry? What will you not conform to? And this comes down to your values and your goals too. So for me, I'm not gonna conform to bro marketing. I'm not going to say, I'm gonna help you make seven figures in a month. I'm not gonna say that because I teach and I consult and I guide and I help and I mentor and I coach, but my people have to take action to get the results they want. So if you are that person 
that wants to get to seven figures, I can help you do that. But I'm not, that's not what I'm going to hang my hat on because what I'm going to hang my hat on is serving you to the best of my ability to make your life easier and better as you grow your business, to bring in clients, to help you become visible, to generate leads. But the money part of it isn't the stake that I have in the ground. The stake I have in the ground is that I want to serve you to the best of my ability so that you can take everything you learn and create the business of your dreams. The other thing I won't conform to is having to be on social media. You can tell me all day that I have to be on social media to grow a business and all day long, I'm going to say, no, I don't. And the reason being is I've done it. (laughs) I've grown a successful business without social media. And I've done it because I know SEO and people find me on Google. I also know PR. So people find me through PR, being guests on podcast and things like that. There are seven, eight figure business owners who do not use social media to grow their businesses. So that's my stake in the ground. That totally differentiates me because I'm one of few people that actually really tout that or really believe that or really build my business around that fact. So what about you is unique in terms of your thought processes, your values, what you won't conform to? What are you a master at? So as we go through this, I'm going to pause, but you can pause the replay to write your answers down. So you don't have to frantically write as I go along. Pause and give give yourself an opportunity to think deeply, to write answers that are genuine and are going to help you see what makes you unique, what differentiates you, what your soulmate clients need as we move further throughout the the program, the workshop. So what are you a master at? Is it strategic thinking? Is it creativity? Is it problem solving? What are you a master at? Because I guarantee you're a master at something, maybe even many things. But what are you a master at that you love and that truly makes an impact for the people that work with you? What is your superpower? Maybe you don't recognize your superpower, but I bet past clients could tell you what they think your superpower is. And your superpower may be what you're a master at, and it may not be. Your superpower could be that you're compassionate or that you're empathetic. It could be that you care for others. It could be that you are very strategic. But what is your superpower? What can you do that nobody else in your niche can do? What words describe you? Sometimes it's hard to come up with words that describe you. You might lean towards your values or maybe even spiritual gifts, but ask five to 10 people that know you well, what words they would use to describe you. It's actually a really fun exercise. Just text them and say, hey, my coach has me doing this exercise or, hey, I just saw this um, workshop and the, the leader of the workshop said to ask this of people that I know. Ask them what describe, how would they describe you? What words would they use? You will see some overlap and then you'll see some that are totally unique that you're like, whoa, that's how they see me. But the benefit of doing that exercise is that it gives you insight and words to use in your messaging and your copy that are going to resonate with your soulmate clients. You can even ask former clients or current clients that question too. Ask them both, what's your superpower and what is your, um, what is what are words that they would use to describe you? It's a really fun exercise. So I wanna move on to who is your soulmate client? We need to be able to differentiate ourselves 
in order to connect with our soulmate client. We have to be recognizable, memorable, and shareable. If you think about scrolling on Instagram, you can scroll halfway through and you can't see whose account it is, but yet you see the, the graphic or you see the post or the font and you're like, oh yeah, that's so-and-so. And you scroll up, yep, that's who that was. Because they're consistent, they're clear, concise, and their personal brand, their branding, how they communicate, what differentiates them and their brand identity their logo, their assets, they all come together to make them recognizable and memorable. And that's what you need to connect with your soulmate client. But before you can connect with them, you also have to know who they are. And the reason being, all of that content that you create has to resonate with them. It has to build a connection with them emotionally and lead them to trust you, to have confidence in you. Trust determines buying practice practices. And if people are confused, they won't buy. And if they don't have confidence, they don't trust. So it's imperative that you have clarity so that they have clarity. You have confidence in yourself so that they have confidence in you. And we can eliminate confusion. So your soulmate client may be someone who is on a similar journey as you. They could be months behind you, years behind you, but chances are you've experienced before what they're experiencing now. But go a little bit deeper. Each one of the questions that I, I would like you to focus on and really go deep into are imperative for creating that message to resonate with them. So what do your soulmate clients want, need, and desire? What do they expect from you? For example, they may expect integrity, knowledge, results. They may expect timeliness, honesty, they may expect certain responses and certain deadlines. What do they expect from you? And on the flip side of that, what do you need and want from your clients? For me, I want honesty, trust. I want them to respect my boundaries. So if I say I am available between nine to five, working traditional working hours, don't text me at 10 p.m. because I'm already in bed. <laughs> I'm kidding, but kind of. But, you know, we have to have established boundaries. And then for me, I don't want to get burnt out. I have to turn my brain off at some point in time because it's on all the time. So I have to have people that respect my boundaries or respect when I don't respond right away and they give me the grace to respond in 24 to 48 hours versus responding immediately. The same thing applies to action. I work with people who want to achieve, therefore they're ready and willing to take the recommendations that I give, to take the strategies and implement them. They are willing to take action, put one foot in front of the other, and make the next best decision for them and their business. So what are those needs, wants, and desires that your soulmate person has? And perhaps I should back up for just a second. Instead of saying ideal client or ideal client avatar, I use soulmate, client or soulmate person. I don't use avatar because we're people, we're thinking humans. And I want to honor that, that we're people. We're not just a picture or a graphic. Also, I like the phrase soulmate because I want to have a deep emotional connection with my clients. I want them to trust me and I wanna trust them kind of like a soulmate in life. I want us to be deeply connected and rooted in the goal to get results together. 
And so it goes beyond a surface relationship. Because to me, I am compassionate, I am empathetic, and I am going to take on my client's business and want it to succeed the way I want my own to succeed. I'm going to be thinking about them and feeling for them every hour of every day. They're going to be in my prayers. And so that is why I call it soulmate client, because it's that deep connection where they know, hands down, that I have their best interest at heart. And likewise, they're going to respect me, honor me, and have my best interest at heart too. So it's mutual, a sharing of of like-mindedness and values. So that's why I call it soulmate client. And not everybody has to call it that. You can call it whatever you want, but that's why I do. So what is the problem or pain point that they have that you can solve? That only you can solve or help solve the way you do it. What is that pain point that when they get up in the morning and they're making their coffee, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm dreading this. Or when they're packing lunches for their kids, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to do that again today. Or, oh, I can't face another day of that. I'm just going to put it off. What is it when they're making dinner? They're like, oh gosh, I didn't do that again today. Now I have to face it tomorrow. What is that pain point? What is it that's holding them back? What is it they're overthinking about? What is it that they're dreading, that they're, that they're doubtful about, that they're fearful of? What is that pain point that you have a solution for? What are the demographics? What's the gender of your soulmate person? What's their age? Where do they live? Do you only work with local people? Do you work in person, on site? Do you have a storefront? Or do you work with people globally online? Maybe you work with people globally, but they have to be English speaking. So all these things are important. You will have some people say, that, oh, you need to know what kind of car they drive, what kind of handbag they, they carry, where they shop. No, none of that really matters. And you know why? Because they could be a person that shops for a sale, no matter what store it's at, right? But what really does matter is what is important to you to be able to connect with them and provide the result that you promise you're going to provide and help them understand that you're the person for them. And sometimes we do work with people in certain age groups. Most of my clients are between 35 and 70. Um, some people who are younger may only work with people in their 20s. It really depends on the person and who you want to work with, who you are going to feel most fulfilled working with, and who you can really help the best. I work primarily with women. And I, there's not really a, a strict reason for that. It's just that I, I can relate more to women who are on a journey similar to the journey I've been on, where, you know, life is kind of a rat race and they want to do all these things and they want to have a huge impact, but they're not sure how, or they're just feeling so overwhelmed and they're overthinking so much because they just don't know what to do. They need strategy. They need help with that. So who is it, who are those people that you can best serve and feel fulfilled with? What do their demographics look like? Are they female? Are they male? Are they both? What is their general age? These are the type of things that are important to hone in on more so than where they shop or what kind of car they drive. Yes, socioeconomic status can be very important because if you're a high ticket provider, they need to be able to pay you. So that becomes very important. But don't discount the fact that someone could have a savings account that they can borrow from to pay you. Because you're going to give them such a great ROI that they can easily pay that back. How do you feel? Or how do they feel, I should say? How does your soulmate client feel right now about the problem or the pain point they have that you provide a solution for?
Do they feel doubtful that there's a solution? Do they feel hopeful? Do they feel overwhelmed? Do they feel frustrated? Do they feel super excited? What is it that they're feeling right now? And how does their pain point make you feel? Because that is also going to loop back to how you communicate to help them understand that you know how they're feeling. That you've been there, you've walked in their shoes. You know it's not easy, but you can help them get to the other side. So the next step, once you've done all these exercises and you've looked at your personal brand, you've looked at your soulmate client, we're going to go in and we're going to combine all these things to create a statement, an I help statement or a who, what, who, what, how statement. But before we do that, another helpful exercise is going to be what experiences have you had that your soulmate client is now experiencing? What about your journey is similar to their journey? What mistakes have you made that they've made? If you're a relationship coach and you've been through a divorce and through that experience, you learned a tremendous amount and that is what inspired you to become a relationship coach, that experience is imperative for them to understand that you know exactly how it feels to go through a divorce. So what are those experiences? Write them down. So before we dive into the who, what, how statement, your help, a help statement, it's important to recognize any mindset barriers that you're experiencing here. Are there things that are holding you back? Are there thoughts holding you back, emotions holding you back, beliefs that are holding you back from attracting your soulmate clients? Some of those could be money mindset. If you don't believe that people will pay you for your service, they're not going to pay you for your service. If you lack confidence, they're going to see that and they're not going to have confidence in you and as I said before, a lack of confidence leads to a lack of trust. Trust determines buying practices. So if you don't have trust, they're not going to hire you. If doubt and fear are causing you to procrastinate, you're not going to take the right action to create the right message, the right copy for your website, or the right content that's going to resonate with your soulmate person. It starts with beliefs. Do you believe that through Christ, anything is possible? When you believe that he has called you to this purpose, you can believe that he will provide everything you need to accomplish that purpose. Our beliefs empower our thoughts and our thoughts empower our emotions and our feelings, which in turn empower our choices, our behaviors, the actions that we take. And our choices and behaviors are what influence our outcomes or our results. So it's really important to start with that belief at the top, navigate our thoughts so that we can feel positive, have positive emotions, and they make positive choices and take the right action. So write down those money, those money mindset blocks, anything that you feel a lack of confidence in, any doubts and fears, write them down here and get them out of your mind. And then write down the positive alternative. You can think of the return on investment based on the value you provide 
And that will help you see that you're worth every single penny that they will pay you. And if someone truly needs your help, they're going to be willing to pay for your help because they're not going to see anybody else as the result for them. Because when they see how unique you are to them and their needs, you become the only one that matters to them. So what is it, what pain point do they have that they want a solution for so bad that they want that solution more then they want the money in their bank account. And that's how you start looking at this. Flip that switch in your mind. So take a few minutes and do that exercise. And it may seem like you don't have any of those, but most of us at one point in time or another have some mindset challenges. So if you do feel them, Put them on paper, get them out of your mind and let your mind see that you have control over these thoughts and you can change them to be more positive. Because the more you do that exercise, catch those negative thoughts, challenge them to say, this isn't realistic. Someone I know and love wouldn't think these same thoughts. Change those thoughts. You're going to have more control over those thoughts. And then more confidence. The more confidence you have, the more confidence other people will have in you. It's a beautiful cycle, but it takes work. It's not just one and done. So if you have any of those struggles, I encourage you to recognize that and do that exercise daily to make sure that the your thoughts are pure and your thoughts are trusting, not doubtful, not coming from a place of chaos or distraction. So how do you track the right clients in your business. I have another verse here, and this goes back to those mindsets that I mentioned. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So he's with us. And he will guide us. The Holy Spirit will share his knowledge, his strength, his wisdom so that we can make the right decisions and take the right action to move forward in our business. So as you're doing these exercises, remember, tap into him as a resource. That was another agenda page. So as I said, for the replay, I'm lumping this all together. So you have those if you wanna use them. Um, I think I wrote here, like what is your, your what your soulmate client wants? This is a great way to remind yourself. Again, remind yourself of your purpose, any takeaways, action items that you want to carry with you going forward, put them on that agenda. All right, so now it's time to create your who, what, how statement. So in this space, you can write your who, then your what, and then your how. So I have an example here. Um, this is related to my business. And we could convert this to an I help statement, or we could leave it as... Um, the way I have it written here, there's some, I don't want to say controversy because it's not that critical, but there are different opinions about the I help statement versus a statement that is like this. I personally don't have a preference. If I was speaking to a group of people that I knew were health and wellness providers, I would use this statement. If I was speaking to like at a networking event and they asked me what I do, I would be more likely to say, oh, I help service-based businesses, health and wellness providers, blah, 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 blah. So the choice is yours. Do what feels right to you. Ultimately, you want to memorize this and it becomes kind of like your intro anytime you are a guest on a podcast or attending an event online or attending an in-person networking event, going to a speaking engagement, whatever it is. So it can be short and concise, but this is going to become kind of the, the core of your copy and your content that you put out into the world. So for me, I could say as a health and wellness provider, you want to stand out online to attract more clients, have an impact and make more money faster. 
but you don't want to be on social media. You need simplification, automation, and visibility. The simplicity you need is available in the Purpose to Results Success Without Social One-Stop Business Growth Coaching Program. In the program, you will experience support, guidance, education, and mindset. You need to create a brand marketing strategy that gets you seen as the go-to in your niche, all while simplifying and streamlining your business to create sustainable results for a lifetime of earning potential. So you can see the who is there, the what, the how, it's all there. So now you get to take a stab at this. Who do you help? What is their pain point? What do you help your clients with or what do you help them do? What benefit can they expect from you? And how do you do what you do to get the results that you create? Do you have a specific program? How do you work with your people? And then you take all three of those and you put them together. Now, you may not just take three succinct sentences and put them in succinct order, but you can craft a nice flowing message by putting those three things together in whichever order you want to put them in. I would love to see what you come up with. I would love for you to reach out and share with me what differentiates you, who your soulmate client is, and your ultimate who, what, how statement. I would love to see it. I, you know, the, the funny thing is this is a replay, so I won't get to see your answers like I get to see on a live replay or a live class. So um, if you want to share that with me or you want somebody's eyes on it, I would love to be that person. So I will include in the description of the video, the um, link to my calendar. So if you have questions or you want to dive deeper into this or just need help with clarity, you can access my calendar and book a call with me. Or if you just want to email me, I'd love to see it. If you're just curious, um, like I am, and you want to share it with somebody, I would love to see it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.